All right, for the last couple of examples here that we are going to do for this lesson, we're going to write an equation for the parabola with the following information. Now, I've written at the top the vertex form of the equation of a parabola, and we've been given here a vertex of 3 and 5. So the 3 represents our value for h, and the 5 represents the value for k. Now, because it's opening down, we know a has to be negative, so a is less than 0, it's negative. It also has a vertical stretch factor of 2, so a has to be a 2. But combined with the fact that it's negative and 2, we know that our equation, the a value, has to be negative 2. And then we're going to have our x minus h, which is 3, the x-coordinate of the vertex, all squared, and then plus k, plus 5, the y-coordinate of the vertex. And we're done. That's all we have to do there. So try the next one, vertex at negative 4, 1, opening up, vertically, vertically compressed by a factor of 1 third. All right, so vertically compressed by a factor of 1 third, that tells us A is equal to 1 third, and it's opening up, so that's just telling us it's positive for our value of A. So we're going to have positive 1 third, bracket, X, and then we're going to have take away negative 4. So if we take away negative 4, that's going to turn into a plus 4, and then the k value, we're moving up 1. So our final answer for this, I'm just going to use a different color, our final answer to tidy this part up in here, we're going to have y equals 1 third bracket x plus 4 all squared not sure why I get drag on that. Uh, and then plus 1. Just explain everything's not working out nicely for me right now. All right, so there we go. That's our equation for that one. The last one, it wants to be reflected in the x-axis. That tells us A has to be negative. It has to have the same opening width, or I could say it's congruent to this. So I know it has to be negative, but my a value is just going to be a 1, so negative 1. Move to the right 5, so that means our h is positive 5. And move down 4 units, our k is negative 4. So our equation should be y equals negative a 1, which we don't have to write the 1, x minus positive 5, or x minus 5, squared, uh, add negative 4, it would just be minus 4. All right, the last one's a little trickier. We know our vertex is at negative 1, so that's our h value is negative 1, and our k is positive 5, but we don't have the a value yet. We only have this extra point. So I'm actually going to start with y equals a bracket x minus negative 1. So I'm going to change that to x plus 1 squared and then plus 5. So my first step is I subbed my vertex in to the equation. Sub vertex in for the h and the k. Now, the negative 4, this is like um, solving for b and y equals mx plus b. We want to solve for this a, but it's in the vertex form of the equation instead. We're going to sub in the negative 4 for the x and the negative 13 for the y, and that way we can solve for the value of a. So y has to have a negative 13, so I'm replacing that. I'm going to leave my a as an a for now. My x has a value of negative 4, so we don't switch the sign, we just sub in what we have. And then we're going to uh, simplify so that we can solve this equation for a. So I'm going to simplify inside the brackets first. Negative 4 add 1 would be negative 3, which has to get squared, so Bedmas says brackets first. And then I'm going to apply that exponent of 2, so negative 3 times negative 3 would be positive 9, times a, so I could do a times 9, or I could just write that as 9a plus 5. And now I want to get a by itself, so my first step here to get a by itself, I'm going to undo the add by subtracting 5 from both sides. Let me slide over here. Uh, negative 13 take away 5 would be negative 18 equaling 9a. a is being multiplied by 9, so to get a by itself I'm going to divide it by 9, and then that gives me negative 18 divided by 9 is positive, uh, negative 2, sorry. So negative 2 is a. So my equation will be 
y equals negative 2. And I'm going to go back up to my original equation where I had that vertex form subbed in, or my vertex subbed into the vertex form of the equation, but I'm also going to sub back in the value of a. So I get that as my equation there. So hopefully that makes sense there. Um, and I have an example two here because it came from another handout that we did. I don't know what example we're on now. I think it's four. A ball is hit into the air. Its height is given by this equation. Height is in meters, t seconds, can be approximated by this equation here. What are the coordinates of the vertex? So if I look at that equation there, my vertex comes from here and here. Remember, switch the sign, so it's going to be positive 4 and 120. Those are the coordinates of the vertex. Now, this parabola is opening down. It's concave down. What does the vertex represent in the context of the question? So instead of y and x, we have t and h. So t is our time, so the 4 represents t for time, and the h is like the y. The y is the 120, the h is 120. So the height is 120 meters when the ball, or after 4 seconds, uh, after the ball has been hit. So the time, the 4 is the time, and the 120 is our height. Now when I wrote that statement, you'll notice that I actually put the word maximum of it. Because remember, this is the vertex, and this parabola is opening down. So if we're looking at that, at 4 seconds, it's reaching a maximum height of 120 on the y-axis. Okay, so think of your x-axis and your y-axis, and that's really what we're looking at in terms of our parabola there. Now, what was the height of the ball one second after being hit? So one second, that's telling us a value for time. Time is one. That means we're going to sub a one in where the t is, and we're going to solve for h. This is asking, what is the height? Solve for the h is what this question is telling you to do, and it's telling you to what to do with um, the value for the time. So we're going to actually go h equals negative 5, bracket, 1 take away 4, squared, plus 120. And then we're going to just evaluate that uh, equation to find out what the height is one second after it was hit. So again, brackets first. We're going to get 1 take away 4 is negative 3. We're going to have to square that value. Exponent will be next. So negative 3 times negative 3 will be positive 9. So we're going to have 5 times positive 9 plus 120. Again, you could just put this right into your calculator and get an answer. Uh, that's going to give you negative 45 plus 120. I'm not enjoying the lag time on here, and then I would uh, do that calculation, 120, and then subtract 45, and we get 75 out of that. So therefore, the ball has a height of 75 meters one second after it was hit. So hopefully that makes sense there. Now, part E here, it says, from what height? So again, we're trying to figure out the value for our height. Height is a question mark here. From what height? was the ball hit. So when the ball was hit, it's implying something about the time. At the moment the ball was hit, our value for time is zero. So we're going to use our equation again, but this time we're going to sub in zero where our time is and we'll solve for our height. So that would be a question um, if we would have put this the original equation here into Desmos when we first started this unit we would have been able to read these values from the graph that we put into Desmos. Now the last one's the tricky one. It says at what times, so here we're solving for t. We want, need to figure out what t is equal to. Uh, was the ball's height 100 meters? So this is telling us our height is 100. So in the equation, we're going to put 100. Now this one's tricky, so I strongly recommend you follow along with this one. We're going to put 100 in for the height. We're going to have negative 5, we're going to have t take away 4 squared plus 120. Now, this is the only kind of quadratic that you can use this method for solving uh, in terms of isolating. So this is going to be like 
uh, when we're solving a linear equation, we do Bedmas backwards to get the variable by itself. So I'm going to take my the things around the t and undo them backwards. So the first thing I want to undo is this add 120 by subtracting 120 from both sides. So if I subtract 120 from both sides, I'm going to get a negative 20 on this side equals negative 5 bracket t take away 4 squared. Now, the next thing we're going to undo, if we think of Bedmas backwards, we're doing Sam Deb. The next thing we want to undo is this multiply and divide. Currently, we're multiplying the t by negative 5, so we're going to divide both sides of the equation by negative 5, which undoes it there. Negative 20 divided by negative 5 is positive 4. Okay, so we've taken care of the multiplying and dividing. The next thing we're going to undo is this exponent of 2 that's on that. Now, the opposite of an exponent of 2 is square root, but the weird thing is when you actually square root a value, you get two possible answers, a positive and a negative answer. So we could actually have positive 2 or negative 2. The square root of 4 is 2. So positive 2 or negative 2 will equal the t take away 4. And now we're going to undo the stuff in the bracket with the t, which is the plus, uh, the minus 4. We're going to undo that by adding 4 to both sides. Now, we actually get two possible answers for this. I'm just going to slide over here for a second. We have positive 2, so the positive 2 plus 4 plus 4 equals t. Or we have negative 2 plus 4 equals t. So positive two, positive 2 plus 4 is actually 6, or negative 2 plus 4 is positive 2. So the ball has a height of 100 meters actually at two times. The two seconds would be after it was hit on the way up to its maximum, and then it hits its maximum height of 120 meters, but then on its way back down, it hits a height of 100 meters, and that's six seconds. So there's two times within the context of this question where the ball has a height of 100 meters. So hopefully that makes sense. You can always throw that equation into decimals to kind of get a better picture sense of what's happening with these uh, types of questions, but, but our goal is to be able to use the quadratic model to be able to solve these problems. Quite often we're talking about balls being kicked in the air or hit, uh, a rocket being shot off a roof. Um, the fact that this had an initial height of 40, which I just realized I only wrote 4, uh, 40 meters above the ground, it suggests that maybe it was hit off the roof of a building or off a hill or something like that, or off a cliff. So hopefully that makes sense with that and you're able to answer some application questions.